Catton place. Oh, check them out. What's up, buddy? Is this safe? Are they gonna think I'm going to steal their Masonic secrets? Satanic. This is wild. None of those tools look friendly. Yeah, that's a fancy building right there. I wonder what that originally was. It's a beautiful town you have here. It became a state park. It became the smallest state park. You guys want to go see some drugs? Hey everybody. I came to Oklahoma because I'd never been here before. Uh, but there's also a story that I really like. And uh, the video is not really about him, but it's about his town. It's a guy named James Banning. He was the first uh, African American to go fly across country. He went from Los Angeles, Los Angeles to Long Island, New York, about 3,100 miles, and he did that uh, despite being turned away from so many uh, air schools and flight schools. He finally got uh, learned how to fly in the army, and um, and in 1932, um, in 1932 he crossed the country. And in 1933, four months later, he was in an air show and he died. So uh, I just thought, like, let me see what his town looks like and uh, well, think about think about what it's like for him, you know. And it's an old town. It was the original capital of Oklahoma. It was the territorial capital um, before it became a state. It became a state, I think, in 1907. They voted for Oklahoma City to be the new capital. Uh, so just take a walk with me. Let's check out the town and uh, let's see what's out there. Let's go. All right, so first thing I want to do is look at this Masonic temple. Now, I can't tell you how big this thing is, um, but on their site and on Wikipedia, it is listed as one of the largest temples. So uh, take that for whatever it's worth. But uh, it's pretty big, and c considering the, the size of this town, which is very small, uh, this is massive. The whole street. Uh, Main Street, I guess Oklahoma Avenue it, uh, comes straight here, but there's nobody here. Let's walk up 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 here Is this safe? Are they gonna think I'm going to steal, steal their Masonic secrets? So from what I understand this building was built in neoclassical style, which I don't remember from Roman art and archaeology class. Oh, there's a door open. I will not be going in there. Unless somebody comes out, maybe they'll give me a little tour. So this is this is nationally registered as a historic place. By United States Park Department of Interior. There's some solid doors. Wow. I'll get close. I give tours at 10 a.m. So I came a bit too late. Ah. That's a pretty blue house right there. I like that color. We got Guthrie Junior High. I think it was originally a high school. But, uh, oh, you can see they even have the Masonic stamp there laid by the Grand Lodge of Oklahoma. Then they have the this is Guth Guth Guthrie High School in like the old Gothic leather letters. Wait a minute, school. school. You ever look at a word that, like a normal word, and then you wonder if, it, if it's spelled right? That was me looking at the Gothic school. That's a beautiful town you have here. Wow. Nice. It is. So this is where the local Guthrians live. I've walked the length of this street. You can see the Masonic Temple at the end. And then you can kind of see the old town. Right here we have an old church, Guthrie Gospel Cap Chapel. They have a pretty old sign, breaking of bread, 9.30. Well, I don't know what that means. Family Bible hour, 11 a.m. That sign's been there for a while, so. 
they've been on that routine for a minute. Andrew Carnegie was an American uh, industrial business magnet. But he was also a philanthropist and he donated this library to the town. And now it's a museum of Oklahoma Territorial, or it's the Oklahoma Territorial Museum. Pretty nice looking. It's been here since uh, 1902. And I think it was built with $25,000. That wouldn't get you this today, would it? A lot of people living in fortresses if that was the case. All right, these are the, the heads of this other lodge. Oh, some cool engravings here. Grand Master. Let's check out the uh, what the Grand Master presides over. Oklahoma Grand Lodge. So I don't know the difference between this one and the other one. I know I think maybe Scottish Rite is another branch. I hate sounding ignorant on these videos, but I'm not completely sure. So oh, here's the entrance here. Pretty cool. Well, it's pretty fancy for like the 70s style. So Guthrie tr tried to get in flight school after flight school and they wouldn't let them in. They weren't letting blacks in. As a matter of fact, one of the first female black aviators had to go to France to train. So they were called the Flying Hobos. So it was James Guthrie and his friend Alan, that was mechanic. And they flew 3,000 miles from Long Beach, California to Long Island, New York. They call them the Flying Hobos because they picked any piece they could to put that thing together, to put the airplane together. Some believe they wouldn't make it but it was important that he believed it and he did it. Lynch department store. I wonder how long that's been here. You can see some of the old advertisements on the side of the building. What does that say? Cremo. Look at the facades on these buildings. Like you know some of these are old. Some of them are clearly rebuilt. But uh, you can tell some of these bricks are old. Like look at all these uneven bricks in there. Yeah, that's a fancy building right there. I wonder what that originally was. So I stepped into a thrift store. And uh, of course I'm down south, so this is a place you'll still be able to see where it's just memorabilia like this. Again, if you haven't seen my video, check it out. It has a lot of stuff like this and it kind of walks you through some of the things that happened during Jim Crow. Overall, I have to say this is a pretty quiet town, but this has to be a stark difference from how it was back in the day. Imagine downtown, this is, was a center of, a center of uh, attention, you know? I mean, this is where entertainment was. This is where you went to the pharmacy. This is where you went and shopped for your dress for, you know, someone's wedding or whatever. Horses, where all these cars are, Horses were everywhere. People walking back and forth, conducting their business of the day. Now it's super quiet. My voice carries down the street when there's not traffic and there's not a lot of traffic. value their historic district for sure they really preserve that and check this beautiful car out the 
likes antiques. Let's check it out. Hello. Yeah. I've come into a antique store. See what kind of cool stuff they have. I love antiques. And that, uh, that, that picture we just saw was reminiscent of the Racist Museum, wasn't it? If you haven't seen that, I'll put some, I'll paint a link to the video here. Typewriter. I never heard of O.B. McClinton. Have a nice store. Have a great day, brother. So I'm going to go visit a na national landmark. There is a national park here. So it's apparently the smallest national park in America. So what you're looking at is not just the tree. This tree and the land around it is the smallest national park in the United States. So this tree was set up by the Guthrie residents here in uh, the town to to recognize something else. I don't remember right now because right now what it matters is is the smallest national park. And it was a, it was a state monument at first. This is a federal or was a federal post office. Uh, and because this is on the federal land, it became a state park and became the smallest state park. Not to mention that Guthrie is the largest contiguous historic district in the United States. So that's pretty interesting to me. So uh, it's not a very large town. Let's finish walking. Oh, well, it still is a post office. Guthrie, Oklahoma. Where do they have the, the Guthrie news leader? Sports on the front page. I see, I can tell you, Oklahomans love their sports. You know, sports are cool, but they love them here. So if you love sports and you want a bunch of teams to support, Oklahoma's ha has them. Oh, look at that, drugstore museum. Wanna go look at some drugs? So this is the Oklahoma Frontier Drug Store Museum. How you doing, brother? Hey, boss. Good. So back then they didn't have a uh, quick mail service like we do now. So they'd have what they had and hopefully if you needed something, they had it in here. They measured things themselves. They didn't always come in pill form. They'd, uh, you know, break apart the drugs, mix it up themselves and hopefully they get it right. So let's go in and check out the drugstore. Hello. Hello, how are you? pretty good this is a really cool museum here it's quite a place they've got some real interesting old things in here yeah is it that do you run the place yeah. well i'm usually here <laughs> i don't really own it or run it but yeah i'm usually here um how long has the how long has this place been here as far as um well the building's been here since 1890. Mm -hmm. It's been a museum since um, 1992. But it was originally a pharmacy? It was originally a, a pharmacy. In fact, okay. we must want an old picture of it just lately. That's the building right here. See, it says um, post office drug store. Oh, it did both. That's why, that's what that old guy, that's why they got that on the window too. That's what he called oh, the place. Okay. Post office drug. So. It was still a drug store then. Mm -hmm. That was, it said 1912, I believe. But yeah, we'll, we'll oh, yeah. Just Is there another picture? Oh, that's just a picture there, okay. I just come across that the other day. Now you're originally from the town? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I was born here and grew up here and stuff. Has it always been as well preserved as it is now? Because, I mean, if, if you took the cars away and put horses, you would I think you... I know, huh? You know, you think yeah. you're back in past. Pretty much. Um, 
there was one time, I remember in the 60s, and this was really strange, but they had these big, huge metal things and they tried to cover the fronts, the bricks, to make them look more modern. Okay. But it didn't hurt them, thank goodness, when they came to their senses yeah. and they were able to. And this covered what already existed? Oh, uh, so most most of them did that, uh -huh. uh, but then they were able to take those down, you know, and it really didn't hurt the buildings. And, um, these buildings are protected now. You can't even can't like if you own the building, you can't do anything to it without like the historical preservation. So they want to okay. When that pharmacy heritage foundation bought it to to house the museum, all the original drugstore things were long gone. So gotcha. So this everything is everything that's in here has been collected and donated from other old drug stores around the state. What was what was it like for you growing up here? It, it's a good town. Good town? Yeah. Uh, close community? Mm-hmm. Feel free to go behind the counters and cases and the soda fountain. Oh man, this is uh this is where you get your tooth pulled out right here. This is wild. None of those tools look friendly. No king. No. So let me know in the comments if there were a drug company that had effective products, but their, their the name of the company was Satanic. Would you would you buy that and have it around your house? Would you have your 666 malaria liquid with you? How about your 666 cold tablets? Would you would you use that? Look at this old desk here. The pharmacist would sit here and do his his typing for the day. That's an old typewriter. That is solid. They made everything solid back then. Check this old wheelchair. Out. I guess this is where the ice cream server or soda jerk might might have stood. You can hear that train and the bell warning of the train uh, that's because there's a train station here and that is why Guthrie developed in the first place Guthrie originally was a train stop all right so I'm just I'm just wandering around Guthrie and then look what I see what's up kitty it's like a little cat in place oh Check him out. What's up, buddy? He's gonna show me his toys now, or just plop down. It looks familiar. He has a little boxes and things to climb on. That's pretty cool. I don't see any other, oh, there's another one over there. And then there's a black one. That's cool. I wonder who set that up. Didn't say what it is. Maybe just showing off the kitties. And there is where the first publishing of this city came from. This, they used to publish newspapers and periodicals. You could get supplies from there. It's a pretty cool town. It was the first capital of Oklahoma the, in the Oklahoma Territory. And uh, this is the home of James Banning, the first black pilot to navigate the whole length of the continental US, which is pretty cool. You know, I knew about his story and it just, so happens that this is his town so uh pretty nice to see things he might have seen to the degree that he saw it i'm not sure that was a very different time jim crow and segregation um around here so he may not have been able to go into some of the places i went to or see some of the things that i did so uh anyway if you like the video press the thumbs up subscribe share the video and uh you know let your friends know about it let me know if you've ever been here to Oklahoma or would like to come and what do you know about it um, I'm really interested love you guys have a good one